and off we go. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. We have 18 participants, I think, and a number of, of students who are going to present designs and uh, a number of other people. I, I'll just start by, I think... Um, uh, it's, it's, good uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just going to... I'm just going to mute people. Yeah, please, please keep your, please stay muted until uh, you you need to present. Just um, so, yeah. Um, welcome, and uh, this is the um, the current Zoomcast initiative that was set up by Hugh and um, and the student curators uh, back in the in the depths of COVID times, um, with the aim, I guess, to keep conversation conversations alive. And keep people keep people in touch with each other and and talking, um, and it's it's great that it's continued. And I think today's um, meeting is is of particular interest to to a number of us here today. Um, I suppose I'm I'm delighted to 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 chair this this presentation of of student designs for um, or student proposals for for the Gulliston Depot site. Um, formerly the, the Gulliston Recycling Centre, very much in the heart of Rath Mines. So it's, it's of, of, of a lot of interest to, to me and, and members of the Rath Mines Initiative who are, who are joining us today also, who, um, who, who have kind of um, been involved with the local community um, in, 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 in discussions about, our, well, well, I suppose most recently we hosted, the Rath Mines Initiative hosted um, uh, an information meeting for residents of Rath Mines to kind of disseminate or make people aware of the plans for the Gulliston site. Um, and we're um, very keen to kind of try to um, engage people in the public consultation process. And we think that, you know, the, the opportunity of presenting uh, student the, the designs from the design studio that was 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 run a couple of years back could really you know prompt I suppose discussion and engagement in that in that process by residents and uh, allow residents kind of understand the the range of possibilities for the for for this for a site a, a, such a salient site as um as the Gulliston Depot so thank you to those of you who have um, agreed to present. Um, and it's, it, uh, we, we appreciate that. I think people we're going to have five presentations um, from, and, and they're by uh, Hugh Gleeson, Petra, Mika Horn, uh, Cahill, um, uh, Isabel and Roisin. So that's the running order. So we might start, Hugh, uh, Hugh with you. I think we're going to have five, seven minute presentations and time, time for discussion afterwards. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'll just try to share my screen now. <clears throat> um, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, and you can see my screen as well? Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess I'll start off just by describing briefly how I addressed the brief. So the brief we were given was design um, uh, primary care centre, which was facilitate uh, like facilities for kind of GPs, physios, uh, dentists, all that kind of thing. And also then like kind of public spaces with, with that, because it's obviously a huge site. Um, so my first kind of response to reading the brief was that there was no, uh, there was nothing in it described that we needed, that we needed to like design uh, mental health, any mental health facilities. Um, so I guess that's kind of, that became the main point for me, that became the main thing that I felt, I feel that Dublin needs and uh, Rathmines needs like a centre for mental health facilities. Uh, because I think like at the moment mental health is still like a very like stigmatized issue and it's very much like on the fringes of our society no one really likes to talk about it and I thought like making this huge site we have in the middle of Rath Mines a mental health center kind of like physically lessens the distance that people feel between them and seeking help um so I'll start this is just kind of like a 
brief description of my project and the building. So um, a ludic place promoting spontaneous actions of play, social interaction is integral to the community. The public will have the opportunity to meet, eat, drink, build, market, exhibit, and play. Integrating issues of mental health into the public so as to destigmatize these problems. Occupants can determine the extension and uses of the spaces. Um, so here is kind of like my ground floor plan on the right and kind of like, I don't know what you'd call it, like a different kind of plan left. The plan left describes what happens at each different part of the site. Um, so I studied Giancarlo Di Carlo and uh, his architecture is, architecture is public and also Constant Nguyen has uh, New Babylon. And the Giancarlo Di Carlo's idea of like uh, architecture, like participation in architecture, and he kind of said that um, architecture is taken in a lead position and that it's too important to be left to one architect and that we should involve uh, involve the public more, which is kind of, Oliver, that's what you were saying, but that you're trying to open the dialogue about what's going to happen as much to the public. Um, so I was kind of studying that and I wanted to make as much public space, as much space for the people as possible and to kind of give people spaces that they can design themselves or that uh, say me as the architect would be able to help them easily design. Um, and so, so this is like a first, like a section or whatever. Um, and you can see the ground floor is all like public space and it's like uh, these columns on the ground floor can be like manipulated and changed to facilitate like exhibitions or markets and that kind of thing. And above that is the mental health, mental health center. And so in the mental health center, you've got like therapy rooms or kind of art therapy rooms or gyms for because there's also I also designed like a uh, an accommodation block for people living there. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the time. And so this kind of these facilities are for people who are living on site or for the public. And so right below this mental health center is a main public space that people go to every day. And by going there, people think okay, maybe if I do need help uh, at some stage, this is where I can go. Um, this is just another cross section looking at the mental health building. And also then this is the existing ESB building that I converted into like a meditation space, meditation room and yoga room and that kind of thing. And you can see uh, the church in the background and the tower and stuff. Um, so this is then the building kind of became a lot about or the project became about the worms I view um, quite a lot. So this is kind of a worms I view of the big undercross space below the mental health center. And you can see this kind of um, these structures that people can build on and exhibit and sell and that kind of thing. And this is like the last model I had, um, which I did on like I I put it on like a heavy acetate sheet so you could hold it up and look at it through the worm's eye view. Um, and yeah, so, and then, so this is the last thing. So the columns that you've seen on the ground floor is, I like hadn't designed them until close to the end and to make it like as versatile as possible, I made this kind of scaffolding structure that people could change as easily as possible. Like without anyone's help, they could change it to suit what kind of whatever their needs are. And you can see here, this like two different versions of how these space could be used. One as market, hang things, and then the other as like an exhibition space. And it could be kind of personalized as much as possible. Um, I, that's kind of it. I hope that kind of makes sense. I was trying to explain everything, but yeah, I don't know. It's hard to explain the full project in five minutes or whatever, but um, I hope I got the main idea across anyway. Yeah, great, Hugh. Thanks. Thanks. Um, we might jump on to Petra and, and just run the presentations one after the other and see a conversation for later. If people do have comments, you, you might want to put them in the chat or, um, or save them for discussion, I guess. 
Um, can you see that? Yeah, yeah we can, Petra, yeah. Um, so just to preface the project, coming off the back of semester one last year, I had proposed the idea of kind of planting a forest in the site um, adjacent to Rathmines Library across the street. And I've been really thinking about the remedial qualities of being within nature and how this might weave itself into the built environment. Um, so from the initial stance, I felt driven by this, um, where a building in public space could inhabit people and planting and how this might manifest in a structure. And the brief was for a care centre and I felt that promoting this idea of a natural health service um, was the course by which to take. So I then undertook, along with another student, a study of documenting and drawing a series of Irish wildflowers and grasses and ferns and really addressing the different conditions that these would need to grow. For example, the kind of light that they would need and maybe what time in the year they might bloom. And with this, a focus on kind of low maintenance when they would be planted within a site. And then really the bones of the project um, became clear where the ground plane would be offered as a, as a place for the public. And then kind of a fabricated series of rooms might exist above this. And as well, how this fabricated skeletal form would work with the existing site conditions that are there and how this new intervention might kind of perch or graft itself um, above what is already there and a ground space. And then um, a refinement came for some of these ideas with the questions of the ground and giving measure to what is already found on the site and an idea of slicing the existing ground and planting within this came to fruition whilst forming seating around this planting for the public. And then another development was to actually carry that planting up to a roofscape and offer this as a public realm as well. Um, and I think it is such an interesting site and so much could be done with it that I really wanted to make it adaptable in a sense where the use and the densification of the space could morph and maybe change over time and that additions and subtractions could be made architecturally but that a groundwork of seating and planting and public space would remain. Um, and then this was a piece of what it might look like where seeding and planting are worked quite delicately into the ground and that a series of rooms fits into a steel structure above. And then kind of what it might feel like um, to be on that ground or to be within a room that is made out of wood and glass that fits into a steel frame. And then to look at the site, I think really to tread lightly was what I was trying to do in a sense and that the grain of these interventions kind of follow the line of the Gulliston terraces in the hinterland and that the swaths of landscapes and seating are, are carved out and the build structure similarly follow this grain. And then um, to finish in this section was kind of how I tried to show all of these things that I've talked about. So where the ground is shaped to inhabit kind of a public quality and the roofs alike, and then kind of the spaces in between form part of an inhabited, wor inhabited world of a care center or maybe of a residential space. And then, the you know, in this drawing, the plants are kind of placed based on how they might grow in different conditions. So the plants on the ground, based on what light conditions might be down there or the plants on the roof based on more light and yeah um i think really the project is about kind of how incredibly powerful nature is and this redemptive and kind of regenerative power that it holds and for the environment and for people so yeah thanks petra nice um Carl? Yeah, I'll just get my work up now. Yeah. 
Now, can you see that fine? Yep. Yeah. So just looking at the existing site, first of all, I, I really felt like this site was almost just like an island in the middle of rat mines. Um, felt very isolated from everything around it. And standing anywhere on the site, all you see is the backs of buildings. Um, there's nothing really nice to see. So I, what I wanted to do was essentially create, uh, complete the city blocks that were almost half there. Um, so there were two sort of routes that I wanted to prioritize, which is the north, south, and the east, west routes to provide some better connection in the area. Um, then just looking at some of the, before I could move on to proposing anything, I just wanted to look at the protected structures in the area to see what I could get rid of and what needed to stay, and um, which then led on to my demolition proposal, which is essentially to clear the site. Um, so these are the connections that I, once again, just wanted to show, um, just to provide some better access, some better routes throughout the Rathmines area. And um, so coming on to my proposal, um, as shown here, I wanted to complete all of these blocks that are shown here and provide new fronts to the buildings. Um, essentially just creating four new blocks in the area and two new streets um, that are pedestrianized just to expand that streetscape within Rathmines uh, to provide better access, majority of it for pedestrians um, and to create some new public space. So there's three new public spaces, um, different sizes that could be used for different things created from the project. Um, and it also then creates essentially a new pedestrian hub um, designed as a pedestrianized area from the get-go as opposed to just converting an existing street. Um, so there's an isometric of the proposal in situ just to show uh, the routes that have been created. So the health center is shown here with then four other blocks that could be used for some residential um, areas as well as commercial areas with some new gardens created as well. The health center then opens, uh, sorry, there's a community center at the bottom of the health center, which opens out onto a new public square at the bottom, uh, which is surrounded by new housing. Then there's some along the pedestrianized streets. There are uh, a few more of those public spaces. And um, health center, just looking at the ground floor of the health center, uh, the, the whole idea of it, from that street up north, um, it creates a sort of seamless flow between private and public spaces. Uh, the sort of northern end of the building would be the more private aspect of it, but uh, then when you're entering at the main reception, you can walk through a public garden as well, right through to the community hall, uh, down to that large new public square. And that's just more floor plans. So that's just the section cutting through that what I was just describing is a sort of seamless flow between the different areas of the building and um, providing new access. So the entrance here um, come right into this large open space that then opens out onto this courtyard of the uh, public garden. Then the community center down at the southern end of the building opens out into that new public square. Um, once again, same thing I'm describing here just to show that connection to the new spaces that have been created. Um, so just a view here onto that area it could be used for a, any community facilities really, but I just proposed the idea of a playground as it would be quite a safe area. The, you've got houses on one side and you've got a community center on the other side. So it just sort of naturally creates quite a safe area. And then these new streets could be used for vendors or any markets. But they, I think really they just provide a nice place for housing and um, just that feels safe. The community center then, just a large hall essentially that could be used for a variety of things. But since it opens out onto that new public square, um, anything can really be provided like markets on weekends or any community groups, any sports. And then just lastly, some more views just showing the various areas of the site with an isometric down the bottom there that just should give uh, some proposal of what it should look like. Now that's everything.
Thanks for that, Carla. Great. Um, Isabel? Yeah, sure. Can you see that? I can. Um, okay, so uh, my proposal was a title of the Oasis of Red Mines, and it was a design based on creating um, a holistic wellness centre, combining a community wellness uh, facility and a rehabilitation centre. And this idea for an oasis or a place to pause and find refuge within the city came from visiting Rathmines and feeling the kind of restless bustle and then contrasting that with the almost complete stillness of the Golliston Terrace and that this site would kind of form a place obviously different but not apart from the cityscape to come and enjoy the tranquility compared to um, the rush of the street outside. So the roof plan he, shown here um, just outlines that planting scheme and the building was a periphery condition. So um, it kind of formed a well of green within the city and sheltered the site from the kind of bustle and busyness of the entrance from the Rathmines Road. So this is a drawing of the original site condition as the current Bring Centre and some of the images and the idea of a possible new route forming from behind the old town hall and passing through the site. And a lot of my work I focused on writing about Rathmines in conjunction with drawing it and trying to describe it in a way so that I could understand it myself and the kind of that constant noise and choreography that gets formed by the street outside compared to Gulliston. Material and texture uh, formed a lot of my early work. So before demolishing or deciding to demolish anything on site, I quantified all the materials contained within the buildings so that if they were to be dismantled, they could be reused to build the ground floor of the building and the new flower beds. So to reimagine the grain rather than completely renew it. As well as this, uh, at the entrances to the site to form new thresholds, the hand sketch at the bottom was showing these textured beton brute columns so that they emulate the trees. So as people pass from the city into the site, they form a mediating space. As well as this, uh, atmosphere became very important because if you're proposing a, a tranquil space that's right next door to a very busy thoroughfare, which the Rathmines Road is, there was an idea of creating what's called the Dublin City Council Quiet Zones. There are eight in the city in total, five of which are within five kilometers of the site, which is shown in the pink dot. And a quiet zone is a place that's considerably quieter, which might seem obvious is considerably quieter than its surrounding areas. And it, this was another reason for the periphery condition of the building. It sheltered it from the noise levels on the Rathmines Road, which for it to be a quiet zone have to be at least 30 hertz, um, have to be at least 30 hertz higher compared to the site. As well as that there was the proposal of a new pedestrian route to create more permeability um, between the two conditions of the Gulliston Terrace and the Rathmines Road because surveying the Gulliston Terrace I found it was quite isolated from the main life of Rathmines so this oasis forms a new routeway and the trees and plants all along this route are a combination of varieties, they're deciduous, evergreen, native and introduced. And this ensures uh, an adequate amount of visual stimulation for those attending the clinic and also ensures that there's a constant level of plant life within the site. And all the plants were chosen because they grow in shadow conditions and they're ideal for under canopy planting. The way the planting scheme is laid out uh, is to follow the main circulation routes through the site and this was following on from a precedent by the Renzo Piano Building Workshop on the Rue de Meaux in Paris, where they were trying to create a quiet zone similar to what I'm doing here. And so by reducing the places to gather, you can reduce the noise levels within the site. 
Um, the program, as mentioned, is a community wellness center and rehabilitation clinic. So I focused on the community wellness center as it was located closest to that new route in the north of the site. And so it was the most accessible to the public. Um, it contained swimming pools, yoga centers, a community hall or gathering space. So classrooms that could be opened and converted into one large hall if you needed it for community gathering. And um, the building originally was proposed to have a green roof but that changed slightly and that connection from the periphery condition to the oasis at the center. As well as that, there was a public uh, viewing gallery, which is shown in yellow in the exploded AXO, uh, which connected the site back to the city and to Rathmines. So there was a semi covered outdoor space where people could interact with the city at a new level. And there were created viewpoints between the upper levels and the lower levels of the site. And it meant people in the clinic or in the community wellness centre could experience the outdoors with a certain amount of privacy compared to the oasis on the ground floor. As well as this, a loggia that followed almost entirely around the ground floor, which is shown in the bottom image, uh, helped people to give a certain variety to the interaction with the oasis and that you could view it um, in any weather condition. You didn't have to be outside. Um, and finally, this was the planting scheme created and the planting scheme and roof plan. And this idea of creating this moment or glimpse of green in a kind of monotonous cityscape to draw people in and traffic and fades away. And so you're in this kind of calm, calm descends and a sense of refuge away from the street and you get a moment to breathe and to feel shelter. Um, and while it is a place obviously different from the rest of the cityscape, it's an integrated moment through routeways and uh, reimagining of the green. Thank you. Thanks, Isabel. Great. Uh, one more to go. Uh, Roisin? Yeah, I'll just share my screen. Thanks, Roisin. Can you see it? I can. Okay, perfect. Um, so at, for, at the start of last semester, each group studied a precedent which was associated with public space. Um, the group I was in studied Damascus Gate by Alison and Peter Smithson. So this project focused on the Tyropine Valley, which was a place of unrest between the state of Palestine and Israel. Um, so as you can see from this one to 1000 site plan above, the Smithsons essentially wanted to line the valley uh, with areas of solid and creating the central void with the hopes of transforming the valley from what was once a whole of divide and enabling, enabling it to act as a seam. So I thought the Smithsons approach was really interesting and it was something that I wanted to carry on throughout my work. So this is my one to 1000 site plan, which I will explain in the next slide. Um, so I began this process by... Sorry, Roisin, I'm not sure if your slides are changing. Oh. Um... We're still on the cover sheet. Oh, oh are you? Oh. You're um... not in presentation mode, I think, Roisin. Hang on, let's try share again. Sorry about that. Um... Just while you're doing that, Roisin, I'll just introduce Will Diamond to the to the crowd here. Will, this was your studio, right? You were head of this one up. Uh, yeah, yes, I was. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good to have Thanks. you here. Yeah. Thanks for enabling this. That's that's working now. Yeah. Is it okay? Um, I probably just won't go into full screen then. I think that's the problem. Do you want me to start again, or will I? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Um, so for the first couple of weeks of last semester, each group studied a precedent which was associated with the public space. Um, the group that I was in um, looked at Damascus Gate by Alison and Peter Smithson. So this project focused on the Tyropean Valley, which was a place of unrest between the state of Palestine and Israel. Um, so as you can see from this one to 1000 site plan, um, the Smithsons essentially lined the valley with solid, creating this central void. 
Um, and basically they just wanted to transform this valley, which was once a hole of divide and enable it to act as a seam between the two. So there was something really interesting about this approach and I really wanted to continue it throughout my work. So this is my one to 1000 site plan below and I'll explain it now in the next slide. Um, so I began this process by lining the site with areas of salad. I am following the grain of Gulliston Terrace. And then I started to experiment with the condition of subtraction. So essentially removing areas of solid in order to create voids. So these negative spaces not only allow routeways and access, but also kind of focus more on the human experience. So there are both major and minor voids. So the major void runs throughout the center of the site, and then the minor voids run, through, run around the perimeter. So the major voids relate to the new, whilst the minor voids relate to the existing. So I tried to create this relationship by cutting the area of solid. So that is a continuation of the street or areas of built in, in which it's relation to. So for example, this block of solid um, is cut. So that is a continuation of the apartment line. And then this block of solid is cut. So that is a, it is a continuation. Um, of the edges of Gulliston Colleges. And then this block of solid is cut. So that is a continuation of the street. So as I said, the minor voids relate to the existing, whilst the major voids relate to the new. Uh, due to time constraints, um, we were only able to develop a certain part of the project. So the part that I had chosen was uh, this area of solid here. I chose the space as I thought there'd be a really nice, interesting connection between that space and the town hall. Also because um, the entrance point from Rath Rathmines Road um, would be used quite a lot. And also it is a space which relates to both a minor void and also a major void. Um, so the areas of solid then are based on a five by five meter grid, which is based on the size of a GP's consultation room. So it is a precast concrete structure consisting of precast concrete columns, beams and columns columns, beams and panels, which all link together. Um, so the precast concrete columns then continue from the healthcare centre right out um, to form a connection with the town hall, which I thought was quite important. Um, and from these diagrams, I hope you can see that a lot of the uh, circulation which connects areas of solid is external circulation. So some of this circulation uh, circulation is covered for forming external covered public spaces and others then is just like an open frame structure in order to allow light in. Um, so then we, I started focusing on the internal environment. So this is one to 200 plans and then just a one to 50 cross section, which cuts through the town hall, which is here in the section uh, through this frame structure, which connects the two spaces in through um, the healthcare centre, and then through this external cover public space and then into the major void. Um, so as the plan is quite deep, I had to really consider daylight. So I did this by just uh, propping up the roofscape in order to allow light in from above. Also, I had to consider like hierarchy of spaces and to enable like larger spaces into the plan. So the grid becomes somewhat broken in some places, for example, in this atrium space. And then also just the proportion of the external arcade space needed to be considered because um, it is quite an important aspect of my project as it, it is acts as like a transitional space between the external environment um, into the internal environment of the healthcare centre. Um, so in terms of scale, then in terms of height, I looked at uh, CESA's teacher, teaching training co college in Setubal. Um, so as both projects were quite a very similar scale. So getting the proportions of this external arcade space uh, was something which took a lot of consideration, as I had said, just due to daylight, how comfortable. So just because I lined the site with solid, I had to really think about um, overshadowing on the like surrounding buildings. Um, so these are my last two slides. So I just included some perspectives that I had done um, of the public space. So the first one here on the left is the external acts as that transitional space from the internal environment of the healthcare centre 
to the external environment of the public space. And then having this idea of roof gardens amongst treatment rooms, just to act as um, a place of calmness, I suppose, amongst um, all the healthcare um, operations. And then this would be an open structure in order to allow light in. And then the last perspective um, is views looking down upon the public space. So I thought it was quite interesting to be able to experience the public space from different views, different angles, not just always down on the ground floor. And finally, um, I'll just, these are three other perspectives. The first is of the major void, which relates to the new, um, which has shows the um, external covered public space linking uh, areas of built. And then the, la the one on the bottom left then is the entrance point from Rathrines Road. So this is the external covered, sorry, the framed um, frame structure which connects the healthcare centre to the town hall. And then the last perspective then is the entrance from Parker Hill, which shows that is the frame structure there connecting the um, healthcare centre with the town hall, which would be in the right. And then that um, what external covered public space, which acts as that transitional space. So that's everything. Thanks, Roisin. No and thanks to all of you for, for presenting some, some very imaginative work and um, very compelling proposals there, I think. Um, I particularly appreciate, I think, the focus on, on the public space, um, which, which was consistent across all of your uh, proposals. Um, I'd like to, I suppose, open it out to the to the crowd who are here um, and, and for response to the students' proposals. And while, while that's happening, I might open up the Dublin City Council master plan for the site. I'm not sure whether you guys have seen that or stayed in touch with the, the plan subsequently, um, but I might invite you two to, um, to review it or to give us your thoughts on, uh, on, the, on, on the proposal. Will, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, probably not at this stage. I think, well, I, I, I think it's great to see this work with a little bit of remove from the, you know, the subjectivity of um, the project itself, you know, with a bit of time to, to review it. So I, I think this is an opportunity to, to try and look at it with a little bit of distance and a little bit of context um but um it's great it's great to see this work again particularly you know given the that this has become a, a pressing um moment in in the development of this site and um uh, I I missed your intro, Oliver. So I don't know whether you said anything about the current state of play with the site. But... Yeah, I, I uh, quite briefly. Well, yeah, I, I, I had just kind of was was introducing, I suppose, the Rathmines initiative role role in okay. in um yeah in, in this and and um, uh, just saying that we had recently hosted an information session to try and uh, disseminate, I suppose, the the plan the Dublin City Council's plan for for the site to the wider community of Rathmines, hope that people would kind of engage in the public consultation process. So, that, so we're hoping that this um, will also form, you know, part of that um, initiative to try and to try and draw people into um, thinking about what this site might be, what are the options for it. Um, there are there are a number of members here from the Rath Mines Initiative who, who may want to comment uh, further on our position on it or or comment on the students' work. It's Claudia here. Maybe just to say that um, it's very exciting to see all these proposals, and I think it it would be great if. If some of the uh, local public could actually see some of the work, because it's uh, what 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 they've seen is the master plan that had some kind of generic graphics and then the quite a dull kind of two D um, schematic that didn't really capture maybe the imagination of the of the public, and so they are mainly worried 
you know, what, what, might, what might happen to the site, while the presentations that we've seen now, they, they make me quite excited of the potential of the site and the considerations that the students have shown in terms of the connectivity. Um, they've, they've obviously thought about height and um, overshadowing. They've thought about making it sustainable in terms of using some of the existing material, maybe using some of the existing buildings. They've thought about um, the nature, in, incorporating nature into it. They've thought about making sure that there's nice views incorporated. They've thought about public realment, community use in, in really exciting ways. So I, I thought it was really uplifting, actually, um, presentations. And, and each of the presentations had some really interesting elements that they could, could be further developed and incorporated into, into the ultimate design solution. So I thought it was really, really interesting. Thanks to everyone. Uh, certainly, Karen, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, thanks. I was I just have a hand up there. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, the, uh, yeah, thank for, thanks very much to the students. I, I'd seen one or two of these before when we were invited in uh, last year, last uh, semester to, to um, review them. And it's really interesting to see, again, as, as Willis said, to see them um, with fresh eyes. Um, and I suppose, uh, as you said, Oliver, the thing that really strikes me is the attention given to public space and the quality of the public space uh, in the developments. And uh, something that, uh, you know, as Claudia was alluding to there, isn't, it hasn't really been um, given the same attention in the, the council's uh, uh, framework plan or, or, or master plan, as they're calling it. Um, and I think the, I mean, there's a couple of different um, sort of approaches to it in, the, in, the, in the, the designs we've seen there and how we treat the site. And I think you know, Cahill's is very interesting in terms of it, it feels like it's an extension of the urban form, the urban fabric there with the, the you know, the network of streets and, and laneways continues through the site and, and is formed by the buildings on the site. And then you've got the contrast with that, which is very much more about creating this as, as I think uh, Isabel described it as an oasis. And but similarly in, in, in Roisin's scheme where you're looking at building to the perimeter of the site and creating this really um, calm and, and quiet space in the center of it, which is really appealing. Um, you know, the, the issue of public space obviously is, is something that has come really to the fore uh, during the pandemic. And the sort of the, the, the equitable access to public space in Rat Mines is a particular issue. Um, and I think it, it's really interesting to see the, the potential for this site to provide um, an asset to Rat Mines, which isn't just about uh, the buildings themselves, but as much about the space between them and, and, and the, the quality of that space. Um, so and, and that you know it, it is a tricky site in the respect in that respect in terms of the boundaries. So I think that the idea of of wrapping the perimeter, um, as in in Isabel's scheme, is really interesting. Um, we've got this awkward junction with the, the Swan Centre um, service yard. We've got the the backs of houses, which some of which have have used developments um, to the the west of the site and. Uh, You've got the backs of houses again on the east of the site and then this blank wall essentially to the apartments to the north so that idea of of, of, of occupying the perimeter of the site with the building is, is a really interesting one that i think uh, works very successfully um but i think every, you know each one of these schemes is really uh, kind of uh, sort of have a different approach to it and a really innovative uh, way of looking at it, which we, we haven't really seen um in the council's proposals and which i think as Claudia has said, it would be a real benefit if, if the local community could, could see some of these um, just to get a, a, a better idea of the potential for this site uh, and what it can do for rat mines. Yeah, um, I suppose just to, to pick up on a, couple, a question in the chat, uh, Johnny Jansen is asking uh, about the existing buildings on site. So some of you guys um, we're retaining those buildings. Do you know anything about the condition of them? Um, and the, I suppose the value, cultural heritage value of those buildings? I think, uh, was it Cahill maybe you were retaining them or Petra? Yeah, I propose to keep some of them. Um, there's some really beautiful kind of old red brick there's a large old red brick building, which is the HSE 
the side of the old HSC, and then there's a little kind of stone coach house near the entrance and another stone building kind of um sort of in the center of the side towards the left. Yeah. Um, so the, the council's plan currently is to retain those oh, okay, buildings, yeah. but to demolish the the red brick power station building. Okay. Yeah. So the so the so the yellow or sorry the, the blue the cyan blue buildings mm -hmm. here are the are the are the are the stone buildings which will be retained and and I think small shops and coffee shops. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there has been a, a lot of focus at the information meeting, particularly on on using, reusing the the red brick building. Um, maybe even some people were proposing that it could be the primary care center could be adapted into that building. Um, just to any anybody else want have any comments they want to make? I just add a note on that um, the electricity building. I mean, I only found out recently that that building dates from about 1907 or 1908, and it was built by the Rathmines Township uh, to provide electricity supply to Rathmines. So it is, a, as well as being quite a fine building architecturally, it is quite an important historical and uh, um, uh, importance in Rathmines. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oliver, can I just? I mean, maybe just ask. Um, a question to the students is really interesting to see this work just the question of and actually it's a question for the the, map, the current redevelopment plan as well what 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 is envisaged in terms of the current functions of the site because the site at the moment serves a civic function you might say in the sense of it's you know it's a center for waste management recycling etc etc that's kind of an essential element of um of, of civic life uh, in some form. So I'm just wondering whether there was thinking about what happens when you displace that? Where does it go? Does it devolve back into the community? Does it get displaced to the edge? Um, or whether that was part of the discussions at, at all? Um, as, as far as I'm aware, it, 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 well, I, I didn't hear much of it. There isn't much reference to it within the master plan. Now, maybe Kieran or Michael might might have more knowledge on that. But certainly, when we had the information meeting again, the, the residents um, in the uh, particularly around the Gulliston area, Gulliston cottages and stuff, were quite concerned that they were losing, yeah, a social uh, a public facility uh, for for disposing of waste um, um, and uh, and and. Yeah, want, wanted some some at least scaled down version of the same in, in the future plan. Um, yeah, that, that's what uh, we understand. I, we, we've been told that they will have some sort of a scaled down version, but what that is is not clear. I mean, it could could actually just end up being you know a few bottle banks and, and a clothes bank or something like that. Um, it, it won't be anything of the scale that's there at the moment. Mm. But there certainly is a desire locally to to retain something in that location. Michael, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just wondering if any of the students like put that question at the center of what you were thinking about, or or whether it was just treated as if the current functions are are gone, or you know, <clears throat> they're. I suppose I I didn't look into it too much, um, but. May, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a local of the area, so I, I can't say I make use of that too much. Um, but I sort of just see, just with the changing times of society, even when we're looking at, say, the GPO this year, we're looking at post offices, smaller ones around different areas seem to be closing up and then everything becomes more centralised. And I suppose it seems like it could be a similar thing for this, where obviously it, it does serve a purpose, but is such a large scale thing on such a key location really needed or is it better to centralize things move them out into a location and make use of something in this area that's yeah. real like it's it has fantastic potential because of its location so is it really the right location for a waste center i i, I would question that yeah i think there was a discussion at the time about uh, Dublin City Council amalgamating some of these kind of bring centres around the city. I remember having 
a discussion that it was it wasn't in this master plan it was in another zoning document about amalgamating and that is it's a, an issue because it means locals who would have walked to it now possibly have to yeah. drive to it may not have access to cars you don't want to bring your waste in public transport and so it forms another entire chain of activity yeah. that has to occur because someone then has to collect it from you but i think that was the new plan was to move them to periphery conditions in the city to larger sites and amalgamate a lot of these smaller centers yeah. um because at the moment the bring center only inhabits about a half of the site um from yeah. recollection yeah oh, that's very interesting just what you're saying there is what was in my mind like by amalgamating and moving to the edge it's a class it's a standard maneuver isn't it though but it brings with it potentially increased traffic because mm -hmm. The reason you're saying like everybody then has to travel to dispose of waste and in so doing produces carbon emissions etc um so it would just be interesting to know if there were there's like what joined up thinking about it albeit acknowledging that the site is underutilized in its current form absolutely michael you've been waiting yeah yeah just there's just the background on this is that the city manager decided several years ago to sell all the smaller sites around so that he could create a large center south of the river and north of the river that was his plan and that's when we became aware that the site could be sold um, and the rat mines initiative had been involved previously and then got involved again um, but in the submission that the rat mines initiative made uh, commenting on the master plan and um, the other groups have said that there should be some facility for a smaller version to be kept there um, because clearly the idea of a 15 minute city uh, doesn't apply if you have to drive out to wherever south of the city with your waste. So we're hoping that they will have a smaller facility, but an actual facility on the site. So that's one of the things we're asking for. Yeah. 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 Could I also just comment just on, and, and in general is that the students' work is terrific and it's so exciting to see it and to see it again. Um, and I'd just like to thank Will Diamond and Michael Pike for stewarding the students and I'd like to thank the professor for this happening in UCD, but most of all to thank the students because it's their work. And I'd really love to see the work exhibited that people can go and stand in front of screens and look at it. Um, and what's for me exciting is that each of the students introduced their project and they described an idea. And then there was a process of realizing the idea. But in fact, if you look at the draft master plan, and I don't want to be cynical about it, but there's very little in the way of architectural idea in the project. Um, it's completely underwhelming. And the, the, the biggest move in that really is to facilitate the transfer of land from Dublin City Council to the HSC so that a primary care centre can be constructed on the site. Um, and uh, so it would be very, I think it would just be a huge benefit for the Red Mines community. In fact, it would be a benefit for Dublin City Council, the city planner and the city architect to come and see your projects. Um, and really hoping that that can be possible. Yeah, so thank you very much for all the work. I suppose I'll, I'll put that to the to the students and, and ask, would you be would you be willing to uh, further exhibit your fascinating designs? Yeah, I'd I'd be may as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Yeah. Well, thanks for the positive response. But I mean, we really do think that would be very much of value. I mean, there there is. Quite a population of Rath Minds who, who, you know, who, who won't engage in a Zoom cast or, you know, a, a YouTube showing. So, like, th this would have wider reach, I think, if we could, um, could print and maybe hang maybe somewhere like the Swan Centre or somewhere like that, um, the, the swimming pool, maybe. Um, great. I mean, it's it's two minutes to two. I, I presume we're aiming for a hard two. You is it? It tends to be a soft two. But it's, um, it's just I, I know from like Will, I mean, there were there were intentions mm. obviously to exhibit the work and and I guess they just got caught up in last year's lockdowns and so on. So there wasn't an immediate um, momentum there to do that. I think it would be and I think it would be great to do it. And there's lots of there's would, yeah. 
examples of us showing work in you know the, the in, let's say outside of the university in in communities and in centers so i th definitely think we can follow up with that well there, there have been discussions about it right there has yeah um and you're right i mean lockdown was a significant factor um in not doing it to date um but i mean what you've seen is a, a small fraction of the work that was made on this site and um there's a there's a whole rake of other other kinds of approaches to to um, bring that site to life and it would be brilliant if we if we could find a mechanism for getting it out there and um you know really showing the council that things can be done in another way um so yeah um we probably need to put our heads together and think about how to do that yeah yeah, well, I'm happy to 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 work with you, Will, to to get them out. Um, mm. I mean, whether whether it's a, a, a selection or or full class, um, but I suppose, I suppose whoever, maybe not all would want uh, to exhibit their work, but whoever does, we're happy mm. to we're happy to enable that. So um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What's the, what's the next step? I'll, I'll talk to you offline about it. And yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess it, you know it's a it, it's a, a key moment at the moment. I I think because um, it, it's now it's kind of a, now that we want people to to see the options for for the site and and mm -hmm. uh, ah. so we'll try and move, move. Yeah, strike while the iron's hot. Maybe on it. Sure. Yeah. Great. Any closing comments from anyone? No, okay. I mean, I, I just want to say thank you, particularly to the, to the five students who 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 presented their work. It was really, uh, yeah, really terrific work and uh, very compelling proposals, and I, th I think can be really helpful in 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 informing people about what might what this site might be and what what rat mines can become um you know otherwise um so so thank you for that um much appreciated and thanks to members of the rat mines initiative for joining and joining the conversation thanks to to will and, and hugh of course for for hosting this and enabling this um it's a yeah it's, it, it's great to take this first step towards wider dissemination of the work so yeah thank you all thank you oliver thank you oliver thanks everyone thank you